welcome to HMD's YouTube channel. I'm Jamsil Chirian and we would be discussing about incinerator. Before we start, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest updates on our videos. An incinerator is a shipboard facility designed for the incineration of waste or other matter on board generated during the normal operation of the ship. MARPOL 7378 Annex 6, Regulation 16 states that all incinerators installed on board on or after 1st Jan 2000 has to be type approved in accordance with MEPC 7640. Let's see the standard specification for shipboard incinerators. This specification covers the design, manufacture, performance, operation and testing of incinerators intended to incinerate garbage and other shipboard waste generated during the ship's normal service. This specification applies to those incinerator plants with capacities up to 1500 kilowatt per minute. The materials used in the individual parts of the incinerator are to be suitable for the intended application with respect to the heat resistance, mechanical properties, oxidation, corrosion, etc. as in other auxiliary marine equipment. Piping for fuel and sludge oil should be seamless steel of adequate strength and to the satisfaction of the administration. The incinerating furnace may be charged with solid waste either by hand or automatically. In every case, fire dangers should be avoided and charging should be possible without danger to the operating personnel. For instance, where charging is carried out by hand, a charging lock may be provided which ensures that the charging space is isolated from the firebox as long as the filling hatch is open. Where charging is not affected through a charging lock, an interlock should be installed to prevent the charging door from opening while the incinerator is in operation with the burning of garbage in progress all while the furnace temperature is above 220 degrees C. Now let us look into the parts of an incinerator. It's got a control panel with operating instructions and operating controls. There's waste oil dosing pump, sole node valves for auto operation, main burner through which waste oil and commercial air is introduced. Pilot burner supplied with diesel oil to warm up the furnace before waste oil is introduced. Main burner and pilot burner is fitted to the primary combustion chamber of the incinerator. Secondary burner supplied with diesel oil is connected to the secondary chamber. Waste oil inlet and outlet valves inlet and outlet valves, service air valve. Duplex strainer before the waste oil dosing pump. Hatch collection door with safety lock arrangements. Garbage filling door with safety lock arrangements. mechanism for dumping the garbage and sludge into the primary combustion chamber and primary draft from supplying air for combustion and cooling the exhaust gases. And let's look into the associated system, tanks and equipment. Waste oil tank is a double bottom tank where all the waste oil produced within the ship is collected. The tank is fitted with steam heating lines to keep the waste oil warm for better transfers. Sludge pump. All the waste oil transfer is handled by the sludge pump. Normally, a reciprocating pump with a capacity of 5 meter cube per hour is used for this purpose. It will also have a strainer fitted to the suction side of this pump. Waste oil service tank. As we know, the waste oil is a mixture of all the oils and fuels like HFO, diesel oil, lube oil, sludge, and water. This mixture needs to be prepared well before it's fed into the incinerator. So the waste oil from the waste oil tank is transferred to this service tank where it is heated to around 95 to 100 degrees C and agitated thoroughly using an agitator. The tank is also fitted with manhole door for cleaning and inspection. 
These tanks fall into the category of enclosed space, so proper risk assessments and permit should be prepared before entry into these tanks. The discharge valves of these service tanks are of quick closing type, so that in case of an emergency like fire, you can easily shut it off from a remote location like fire control room. The tank is also fitted with steam heating lines to keep the waste oil warm, so that we are able to achieve better combustion in the furnace. It is also fitted with a drain line to drain the water present in the waste oil tank to the bilge holding tank before starting up of waste oil dosing pump. Waste oil tanks are fitted with level gauges which indicates the level of waste oil inside the tank. On top of the tank, we can see the filling lines, return lines and vent lines from the tanks. Next, we have the incinerator diesel oil service tank for the pilot burner and the second burner. Next, we have the purifier stuff tank. It is a tank where the sludge and the water from the purifiers are collected during the desludging period. Later on, it can be dropped into the waste oil tank or directly transferred to the waste oil service tank using the sludge pump. The tank is fitted with level gauge, glass, steam heating lines, quick closing wells, and drain lines. Next, we have the scavenge drain tank and the subbing box drain tank getting its filling from the main engine. All the sounding pipes in the engine room will be fitted with self closing arrangements as safety measure so that even if someone fails to put the safety cap, contents of the tank shall not come out. Heads. All the tanks will have a vent head at the upper deck. It is through these vent lines the pressure inside the tanks are maintained at atmospheric condition and as a safety precaution, all these vent heads will be fitted with a flame trap inside. Short discharge connection. If the ship has to discharge its waste oil to the short reception facility, it can be done with the help of this line. The pumping will be carried out using sludge pump an emergency stop button for the sludge pump will be given in the nearby vicinity of this connection at the upper deck. A sludge discharge checklist has to be filled up accordingly. Now, we will look at the procedure for the preparation of waste oil. Of the incinerator. Always while starting the incinerator, the pilot burner starts first on diesel oil and followed by the main burner also on diesel oil. Once a main burner has started firing on diesel oil, the pilot burner automatically switched off and the main burner keeps firing, which can be put off once a solid waste are on fire in the incinerator, which can be visible from the side glass. The FD fan has to be continuously on during the process. For burning waste oil, the starting process is same. Once the temperature reaches around 500 degrees C, the waste oil is admitted inside the incinerator 
and the digital waves are, valves are slowly closed and then the incinerator is purely running on waste oil. The inlet waste oil valve can be opened more or throttled depending on the temperatures of the flue gas and the combustion chamber as seen on the control panel. It is wise to keep the incinerator firing on waste oil as and when possible at sea instead of waiting for the waste oil tank or also called bit separated oil tank to get filled up more than 25%. The reason being an incinerator can have a shutdown time anytime due to a furnace refractory patch up that might be required or due to a failure of the burner control system, waste oil exhaust fan and so many other reasons. This can cause much sludge accumulation until the repairs have been carried out and the incinerator can be put back into operation. Incinerator being a very crucial equipment on board for effective waste oil management, spares of which have to be available on board at all times. Another precaution during operation of the incinerator is to have a macro view of the vessel. Incinerator operation is not permitted in ports, harbors, and estuaries. Local regulations have to be referred to and checked if the incinerator operation is permitted, especially during coastal passages and PCSAs, particularly sea sensitive areas. Let's also see the various entries into oil record book with reference to incinerator operation and waste oil management on board. As per MEPC 736 guidance for recording of operations in the oil record book, disposable of oil residue sludge via shore connection to shore reception facilities has to be recorded under section C12.1. Transfer of oil to the waste oil tanks from tanks listed in the IOP supplement have to be recorded under section C12.2. Burning of oil in the incinerator has to be recorded under section C12.3. Evaporation of the water from waste oil tanks has to be recorded in oil record book under C12.4. So to sum it up, let's have a recap on what we have seen so far. We discussed on the incinerator and its purpose on board. Standard specification of incinerator as guided by the requirements mentioned in the regulation 16 of Annex 6 of Mark 7378. Parts of an incinerator and associated system tanks and equipment, operation of incinerator, precautions of incinerator with respect to the portion of the vessel, importance of having sufficient spares on board, and lastly, entries to be made in the oil record book as guided by MEPC 736. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any queries or any doubts, please feel free to post your comments. Thank you so much.